So let's start. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm. My name is Oscar. I'm 26 years old. I'm living in Stockholm. I'm, so I'm from Sweden. Okay. So first question: Which year um, uh, is Sweden appeared in? It's the first time it's appeared. It's 12,000 years before Christ. Before Christ. You say 20,000. Yeah, 12,000 years before before Christ. Ah, 12,000, okay. It's originally founded, it's originally founded on the papers on 1371. But before that, it's got a long, long history because you also got a lot of history back from the Stone Age, back from the Viking Age. But they can't really tell exactly how long it's been founded, so they founded it. And once again on paper on 13 uh, question it will be three fast questions for you and I will yep. I will be waiting for you three fast answers okay yeah no okay. worries hit me what is the capital of Sweden the capital of Sweden it's originally Stockholm and it was founded 1771 by a name by a man called Birger Jarl okay what is the official language in Sweden? It's Swedish. Swedish, okay. What is the official currency in, in Sweden? The official currency we use in Sweden is called Swedish Crown. We are in the, in the North Zone, we use Crown. The same, we got Swedish Crown as well as the Denmark got the Dan Danish Crown. But you still use uh, Euro? Yeah, it's possible to buy in Euro. If you go down to the store, it, you can pay in Euro, but it usually gets a little bit more expensive because you're missing out on on the act. So that's why you always pay in Swedish crowns because that gets it a little bit lower. Okay. Second question. Oh, second. Next question. Um, who? Uh, surname does a child get uh, when it burns? What? Uh, who surname does a child get uh, when it burns? Oh, the name of the child. It's depending on. A lot of people here got common of the names. But for, for the big reason, they get a family name. But they don't get a name after their fathers. They only get the often name. So a really common often name here in Sweden is called Svensson, Larsson. Everyone that ends on son is really common. Karlsson. So it's basically the family name they get. And if they got, if the fathers got two different, two, two different names after, then it's usually the son gets the name from the father and the girl gets the name from the daughter, from the from the mom. Oh, usually it's from the mom. Yes. Yes. Okay, S next. Uh, <clears throat> a name Buffett Breakfast was created in Sweden. What do you know about this history? I didn't know the name Buffett Breakfast was Swedish. I only know it was really famous back in the 90s here in Sweden when they started with Buffett. And they have had it for a long, long time. But the most famous food when it comes to Sweden. The food, the name Buffett Breakfast is not too famous, but a really famous thing is called is meatballs. Okay. That is the most famous typical plate of Sweden you can get. Once I read amazing facts about garbage. Why does Sweden bring garbage from neighbors? Because they get paid off it and they recycle it. When they take in the garbage, they take the metals and they separate it and they remelt it and they make new iron of it. And the same with the plastic, they melt it down and make new bottle of it. It's the same when you recycle a bottle, you get one Swedish crown back from it. So it's supposed to get earning. And it's the same way when you're taking in garbage, you make money of it. And the same. When they take it in the papers and the plastic, they can also heat to put down and heat up the house with it. So it's economical reason, yes. And does Sweden 
uh, does Sweden buy uh, garbage from whole Europe or just from neighbors, close neighbors? I don't know that fact. I only know that they buy from close neighbors because it's not too far away to ship. But if it's come to metal, I think they, I think they buy from anywhere around the world they can get, as long as not too much to cost and how much they buy. Okay, okay, cool. Is it true that you can treat uh, teas for free? What we can? You can uh, treat treat teas. I mean, this treat for free. Yeah. No, not for free. It's only up to you 20 years old, and when you have changed your teeth after you're 20, then it means you will have to pay. But you also get the fund of it, and in the fund, you get a fund of 300 Swedish crowns every year. No, excuse me, excuse me. When you're up, when you're over 20, up to 30, you get the fund on 600 crowns every year. And originally, one visit to the dentist cost 1,200 crowns. So that will mean 120 euros. Oh, it's expensive, yes? Yeah, not too expensive, but it depends on how much you want to do. Oh. And it's the same because the first visit is cost 1200 Swedish crowns. So that will be 120 euros. And then they just take a look and they see, okay, if you need to repair it, you will need some new, new tips. They will have to book you on a new meet and that will make that you will have to pay how much it costs. Okay, okay. Um, all owners of dogs in Sweden are required to pay a tax for their four-legged pets, for their growth. Is it true? Do you pay a tax for cats or another pets? Yeah, in truth, you do. And that is the fucked up thing with Sweden's system, because you got a lot of tax on everything. It's the same, everything you buy you pay 25% of mums on it. And the first on your paycheck, you pay 33% of tax. And then you pay 18% to your pension, which you don't can choose where you can put it. They steal it and then they pay it out, but they don't pay out as much as they take from, from your salary. And then also every time you go and buy food, you have to pay 25% of tax. Okay, but uh you <clears throat> how many people uh have owen owen pets oh. i mean i mean it's it's expensive yeah. or not when I you have say, i would say it's pretty it's, i would say it's a pretty swedish thing so i would say it's pretty common that swedish people got got cats and dogs so i would say it will be up against 80 percent of the population okay 80 percent yes yeah it's it's uh, almost whole country. Yeah, but it's a big country. I think we got nine nine million one 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 nine million one hundred thousand citizens in Sweden. Okay. Uh, next question. As far as I know, you very carefully about ecology and animals. Do you know there was a case when someone killed a sparrow in a forest? Uh, from a wind rifle and this was noticed by one of the passers, pass, passers by yeah. a man was given uh, six months of a penal colony and fine. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. And I am surprised because it's the same thing. If you're cutting down one tree and the neighbor's not allowed for where you live, it's the same because if you buy a house in Sweden, and you buy it out on the countryside and you got the wood on your on your on your flat on your on your ground and you will need to take it down you will need to search for permission there otherwise you get a refund of 50,000 Swedish crowns that is really weird because if you buy something i suggest you should own it and you can do what you want with it but you have to have permission to put things down on your own land oh. Um, how much do Sweden drink? Is it true that among week you don't meet a drunk man, but for weekend it's many people? Yeah, that's true. And it's really true. And you got some special times of year when Sweden drinks a lot. And you got one celebration called Midsummer. 
In midsummer, the Swedish people drink a lot. It's the first time you see them really drunk and they're lying all around. So they're dancing around one pole, who symbolizes a penis, and they dance it around it, doing typical dance, get drunk. And in week weekdays, they not drink too much, only maybe one couple uh, glass of wine or one beer, but nothing more than that. And in weekend, it's pretty crowded. So it's it's tradition, yes? It's like in your brain yeah. when you don't drink during the week. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what is the difference between hard Swedish language and easy language? The Eastland language. I heard no, it no, 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 easy language. I mean, I read that you can speak hard Swedish language when you use some uh, idioms or hard words and you, you, you use easy Swedish language, like uh, typical phrases. Yeah, we got two kinds, but the easy Swedish language is the first one, but then you also got called Samiska. They only speak it up in the north and it's kind of a juggling. It's the same as they speak up in the Alps in Switzerland. So it's more like juggling. Oh, okay. Double. And it's also because, you know, if you're coming from one part of the country, you got a typical dialect. And you got one dialect in Stockholm, you got one a little bit outside, one from Malmö, and one from that part of the region. Okay, okay. So, Oscar, thank you for interview. Yeah. I was glad to speak with you. Good.